Running around all the time in your mind, but you're not free. I see you want to be grounded, grounded like me. He is the vine, and we are the branches. Understand that this is all about authority. You can be free. You can overcome. You can overcome. Up in heaven, angels dance 'cause they're free. Happy sing for eternity. Without God and His Son Jesus, everything is peaceful. The most excited people in the world, and we have good reason to be excited. Yes. But I have one question: Where are we going? <laughs> well, <laughs> What are we doing? I am just thinking about how excited I am for. I'm getting ready for summer, and with summer, you know, I've got some barbecues to go to. I've got some reunions to go to. I've got some um, beaches to go to. Beaches. I've got some. Swimwear defines. <laughs> so, I need the show. You need the show tonight. I need the show. Tonight, so. the show is about yes. being like so focused on what you look like that you're stuck, you know, and yes. imprisoned. Yes. And uh, we've overcome that, haven't we, Candice? We have overcome. For the most part, <laughs> yes. totally not. No, yes, absolutely. Honestly, yes. That's have, right. So, That's yeah. right. And. And, and we have solved it. I don't know if they've got that photo ready, but Candace and I have figured out exactly how to solve this self-focus when you're going to the beach. Yeah. And so we, uh, this is how we have solved it, if they've yeah. got that pulled up. Year. Yes. That's right. Me Trust me, it, handy, it's so. not far from accurate right yeah. there. <laughs> so it's a good, it works. Well, okay, before we go there, yes. and we've got a great lineup, you have some announcements. I do, I have, well, one, the biggest announcement is the Sabbath time change for this Saturday, which will be celebrating our beautiful festival, Pentecost. And so instead of the 9 a.m. start time, we'll be starting here at 4 p.m. Central. And so we definitely want to welcome all the visitors here for that four o'clock start time, four o'clock central. And then if anybody's joining here, us in Nashville, of course, if you're visiting and, you know, come as you are, but we do tend to wear lighter clothes. So if yes, anybody wants to join Yes, it's a tradition that the so. Jewish people started. Yes. And um, so um, there's a reason behind it. Yes. But, okay, so four o'clock on Sabbath yes. for Pentecost. And then the basics Facebook class did end. And so there's a lot of people on there that are going, I want to keep going, I want to keep going. So um, Way Down has generously put those way, way, way on sale. So if anybody wants to join a basics class or an Exodus Out of Egypt on demand class to stay focused during the summer, Summer, those are all on sale, so we'd love for people to, to join in on that too. So okay. that's really my my two big announcements. Well, so. okay. Wait, and do you have any shout outs to anybody oh. on Facebook? Let's see. But I know Facebook. You said hit 5,200 yeah. yes. last week or mm -hmm. something like that. 5,200. And um, let's see. Um, um, all right. I've got one person here to shout out to Sherry Barclay from Canada has lost 53 pounds so far, and I want to say hello to everybody in Canada. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we haven't shouted out to Isadora and all the people in Europe for a while. I was just thinking that um, sweet shout out to, uh, especially to Bride O'Grady in Ireland, who was meeting with Jane Stanley, who's a member of Remnant in Georgia, and they got together today in Ireland. Ah, so isn't that amazing? I love it. I love it. It's an unbelievable world. Yeah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Yes. So, okay, well, you're right. going to run back and get our guests yes. ready. We have yes. a great lineup for tonight. We do an amazing lineup. So okay. I'll go. I'll go get ready, and I'll be back on. Okay. okay. Don't don't go too far now. Don't go give us some sunblock on. I'll be back. So. <laughs> well, if you are joining us for the first time, uh, believe it or not, this is a very serious, dedicated group of people to God 
Almighty and his kingdom, and we love him with all of our heart. And that's why we are here tonight. And the result is, when we do, is that we do get the Spirit of God. And the result of that Spirit is peace and joy like none other. It's unbelievable. And this place, if you're uh, getting ready every day to see the face of God, to see and meet your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when he returns for his bride, to meet him, you must follow him. You will know him looking at exactly where he walks every day, day in, day out, studying him like none other to try to get in there and do exactly what he wants. In uh, Jesus said, and this is found in John chapter 16, but he said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world. And you will, and he said, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And in 1 John 5, 3, it says, this is love for God to obey his commands and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. Jesus was clearly referring in John to the persecution from the world, and yet in John, his disciple, was referring to the struggles to lay down your selfish desires and serve only God. His commands are not burdensome. It says in, in uh, first John, I want to read that one, 2.15, it says, Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. So these commands are not burdensome. Everyone born of God will overcome this world and its desires. So um, now, the point of the Overcome show, and this is, I know, season two, I think it's, uh, it's somewhere in the 30s here that we've had this year, but we have been going over and over how to overcome every type of struggle that man may have. Cravings and lust and selfish desires are not from God, but from the heart of man. Here's where they originate up here and here, and we must overcome, for the world will pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever and ever and ever. Now that's our goal, that's our aim, that's why we're, we're here. That's everyone watching, I know that's what you're looking for. All those who are seeking God with a pure motive, and not to just lose weight or just to uh, overcome some stronghold for a selfish reason, or just for yourself, but it's there to please God. They will overcome and they will live forever. This is one amazing goal here and it's far beyond the goal of just making it down here on this earth that is full of trouble, just surviving. The result of obedience, if you love me, you will obey. The result of this obedience is answered prayer, and I know that to continue to, ex, ex, I've been experiencing this in increasing measure, all this answered prayer, more and more prayer, more and more answers, and therefore I'm experiencing more and more peace and joy, of course, because what I'm praying for is my concerns for the kingdom, for the salvation of saints, you know, for things to go well for God and his kingdom. And then you get those answered prayers. I have more joy, more peace. I'm less anxious, and but I'm more anxious to get out of bed every day. That I know. 
and praise God every day. I praise him for this one window I've got at the house. When I get up, it's on the second floor and I get to watch the sun. It's coming up over there in the winter and then it's, it moves all the way on the, this side, you know, uh, as a, the, the shift of the earth and watching that every day, it's amazing. And each day is different from the day before and I keep trying to find the way to take a photograph of it and I can't capture it, but it's, it's a photograph in my mind. But every morning is new. But I can tell you what is more than that. It is getting up in that connection to God, even before I get out of bed, but getting there in that connection to God and then that answered prayer, and I know that that prayer is being answered. I know. Moving mountains. And it's, that's what makes me weep. That's what makes me really cry. The thought of life with God forever and ever is overwhelming to me. It's very excited. So no wonder you want to share this. No wonder this connection that alleviates you on this earth. And then it also gives you the biggest bonus in the world, and that is eternity. So it alleviates you here, and it's eternity. Why wouldn't everybody want to obey? And that is why we're here tonight, is to teach people not just that you need to obey, but that you get to obey, and then also what to obey, because there's a lot of obedience out there to things that have no fruit, and you're looking for the ones that give you an unbelievable amount of fruit. But you have to lay down selfishness. That's what John and Jesus were talking about. Selfish desires, self-focus, body focus. That's just one of the many. Tonight, the subject will touch those that know that they're too focused just on any part of themselves. It could be what they look like, but it could be just their own worries, their own frets, their own situation. They haven't let it go. They're not, they're not free. They're not free from worry. And there are many different degrees of body focus that I've run into over the years of counseling. And this obsession can lead to many different strongholds. Exerciseaholics, anorexia, chronic yo-yo weight going up, down, up, down, with a, a fluctuation at all times so that you never can get it off your mind. A self-focused diet controller, you can become a, a real controller all the way to narcissism. Fox News had on there a couple of weeks ago that narcissism in youth is up 30% in the last 30 years. On the other hand, the insecure, self-focused person, when they don't feel successful in reaching their goal, they set for themselves, can become an introvert. They can avoid social events. While in a crowd, their minds own themselves. How did the world get so self-focused, body-focused, comparing themselves to other? And how do you get out of any obsession? And in other, other than the one obsession that's okay, and that is loving God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, a one focus, a straight line of focus, straight up, to God and his kingdom and what he wants done. And that's the adoration that we were intended to have. And so if the strongholds are not laid down, they're going to consume you. They will consume you. They'll eat you up. And you wind up having all these curses and all these things going on that winds up just messing with your mind like it says in Deuteronomy 28. It winds up ruling your calendar, your agenda, and then it moves to controlling everyone else in the house. People that do not obey often become controllers. That's one of the number one signs. They have to. They don't pray, so they've got to control. And so you'll notice that the ones that pray don't control. The ones that have that connection don't feel the need to control. So, but the key is to let go. Let go and obey. Let go of your selfish desires. Lay it down. Let go of your looks. Trust me, no one cares about what you look like. You think they do, but they don't. They just don't. 
everybody else is too focused on themselves to even see what you look like anyway. So you were put here to please God. Those who are obeying do not covet. One of the top 10. And with spiritual maturity, you see that all the saints, when you're looking at them, all you see anyway is the heart. Not what they have, not what they have on, not their looks. You see a heart. You love a heart that's in love with God. We're to take care of our body, and we should, it should not be abused. We must do the best we can. Always be clean. The Bible specific on no tattoos, all of that. You know, I believe, in, in glorifying God. We're to glorify God with what we've been given, just as all the animals do. However, we're not to obsess over looks or, or any of our strongholds. My mother always taught me to do the best I can, then forget yourself. Remember that the mind that's caught up in self-focus is enslaved. Caught up into your own desires, you're a slave to whatever has mastered you. Anorexia can start early in life as young girls see the U.S. spinning out of control when it comes to overweight and obesity. So what do they do? They take charge, not knowing that if they stay focused on this to a fault without the control of the Spirit of God and obedience to what He has set up, hunger and fullness, they will find themselves locked up in a prison of counting calories, excessive exercise, throwing up their foods, taking laxatives. Controllers are in a prison because they have more faith in their own remedies than they do in God. They don't trust God. And they don't trust Him because they haven't obeyed Him to find out that that is what builds the trust, consistent obedience. Tonight, we're going to pursue this subject some more along with maybe no telling where it goes. Please join me and my co-host, Candace Anger, in giving a warm welcome to some well-known faces on stage and our special guests tonight, B.B. and Molly Barkas. Thank you so much in joining us. Oh, thank you. I'm telling you, I know that everyone is excited to hear more of you all's story, and it goes way back. I know. It goes way back. Yes. How long have y'all been around? How long have I known y'all? Well, we, uh, about 10 years, I guess. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we started way down back in the 90s. Uh, we married in 95. At the age of 14. <laughs> yes, I know what you we mean. We married very young. That's right, that's right. When you start young, you are young. I yes. know that trick. <laughs> and uh, started in on way down, not too long after that. Okay. So, so y'all have known me for a long time. Yeah. But anyway, okay, so who wants to go first? Because, I mean, it's intertwined here. Yeah. Well, um, let me jump, sure, jump in. Sure. Okay. Uh, well, we, did, we married in uh, 95, and I had... I had struggled with self-focus for as long as I can remember. I remember being a child and being concerned about my weight, and I really wasn't overweight at, you know, at that time, but just for whatever reason, was just very aware of image. And um, as the years went by, uh, fell into eating disorder patterns and always trying diets, and it was just a, a, a real you know, focus in, in my life for sure. And, um, even it, it escalated during the college years as those can be challenging years and they were for me and uh, went uh, through an outpatient treatment center for here locally for uh, an eating disorder and I would experience you know uh, like a reprieve for a while you know and and that particular program was a 12-step program so I did all those meetings and uh, I was like, ah, oh, surely, surely there's a better answer than this, you know, mm. uh, and it was on a quest. You know, I, I grew up um, uh, being raised to esteem the Bible, and, uh, you know, definitely that was my belief system, and I always felt like that God 
would heal me of this and that, that it wasn't as good as it got, you know, with what I was experiencing. And anyway, fast forward, uh, we married in 1995 and then um, cried out to God on a Friday night. Uh, God, you know, I know that you have an answer to this. And this is after having done, you know, tried so many things and ended up uh, on that Sunday uh, meeting someone who worked at Way Down. And so, you know, just a couple days later and went through the classes uh, and started for the first time in my life, it made sense. Like, just the, the simplicity of eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full. You know, I'd never even thought of that concept and that, you know, it wasn't my mother's fault. It's not in the genes. It's not the chocolate. It's not the cheese. But it was my own heart that needed to change. Um, so I don't know if you want me to continue, but that was kind of the beginning, oh. the beginning phase of it. And uh, so, and I started coordinating classes, and uh, BB was, you were kind of, uh, along well, there with me a little bit in that in that phase of life of maybe we, I think it was at the time I mean we were still living here we lived in Nashville for a while before we moved to California and I mean I think that was in our heavy uh, you know exercise phase and doing anything we could to just maintain our and control our weight so maybe that was is that when you were first started and, taking classes and we so we were probably still you know mixing it as far as we would yeah. do crazy things of wrapping ourselves in trash bags and, you know, putting sweatpants on and going out right. and jogging in 95 degree weather in August. <laughs> no, you know, I, I'm telling you, you know, when you're desperate, you're desperate to look good. Yeah. And, you know, weigh yourself three times a day. Has it changed, you know? And, uh, anyway, we You know, I just want to stop and say that there's a lot of people that have done that. It's just rarely that it's admitted. Let's give her a hand that it's, you know. <laughs> Run up West End, um, goodness. Okay, so you, yeah. so you do, you, you're in California now? Well, and move from here. We, we lived here. And the, the listening audience, I mean, they may have tuned in earlier, but your background has always been, you know, uh, a music career. And yes. BB was, at this point, was lead guitarist for Shania Twain. He was on the road, yes. We don't have yeah. a before picture, do we? <laughs> about 20 pounds of hair so yeah <laughs> in the change series yeah you can see our baptism and it's the baptism of hair Just yeah sorry about your pool <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. But then we did uh, we were on the quest for rock and roll fame and fortune and uh, moved to California trying to get a record deal and then with the intensity of just the pressure of that, of um, then I just, I fell back into my old, my old habits of going back to the bulimia. And at this point, I knew it was wrong. I knew, you know, I, and I knew the tools um, of hunger, fullness, uh, you know, the basic principles of way down. And um, I, I thought if I could just get on the website and just look at the website, maybe it'll set me straight, you know. And, and uh, way down advance came out at that time. And so I, I, there were no classes in L.A., not the most God-fearing city on the planet. And so I thought, well, um, you know, I'll do it. And so I started recording classes, and that's when you... Well, yeah, I remember we had a little recording studio, uh, and uh, I think you had maybe thrown out a few lines, like, hey, you know, because you couldn't find anybody to do the class with you. So you're like, well, if I order a couple of workbooks, you know, would you be willing to, you know, check it out? It's like, ah, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try, you know, or something. I think I was busy with something, but I thought, yeah, yeah, why don't you order me one too, you know? But the beauty of it was we were all the way out there, and we didn't know anybody, and so we had a lot of time to go through this workbook and look in the Bible, and we really spent hours uh, every day uh, just studying this and some of the things that would, that would come up, uh, you know, like, oh, I... Is that right? You know, I'm, I'm trying to th think of something of, you know, that you have to stop sinning mm. to go to heaven. You know, and then, okay, that's, that's not what I thought. I thought I just had to accept Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so then going back, well, there it is in Matthew, you know, there Jesus said to cut off your hand if it causes you sin. And Mark, Luke, John, James, <laughs> you know, and Romans, Acts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, how did we miss Next this? page, next, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, definitely there was an awakening happening. And, um, Y'all said y'all were looking for, looking for churches or looking... Yeah, a lot of church hopping, you know. I mean, I think I did a lot of that 
we did that for years, but you know, you're finding, looking for the right music or whatever. But yeah. at this point, I think it was more our antennas were up for, from doing, you know, way out in advance. Just, you know, we were, we were, our eyes were being opened with the scriptures, you know, and so it was like then really being attentive to what we were looking for, you know, for a, a you know, place that we would call home for you know, church. And so we were really listening to leaders and what mm -hmm. they had to say. And if it was really, you know, it was check, checking our spirit at that point. We actually had a, you know, a barometer at that point of, you know, Ephesians 5, 5. Those things were opening our eyes, you know, of what greed was and in our own lives, you know, with weight and never heard that before, you know. So, and associating greed with food and, I mean, all that was huge, you know. It was obviously revolutionary. So, so it was, it was our, our, I think our antennas were up as we went up and down the coast looking for places to, you know, call church home. So, mm. Oh, okay, so, well, what happened then? Well, so you're we, both we finally, in the Word. We're in the Word, and we're starting to see things. Of, you know, I think initially it was the fear of God that was birthed in me of, wow, I have to stop doing this. I cannot have multiple gods. You know, from seeing the first commandment, you shall have no other gods before me, to Jesus saying, you know, you must be born again, and you have to be a new creation. I realized I could not... I could not love, uh, whether it was food more than God, I couldn't love, you know, my lineup of selfish ambition of just what I wanted in life. Um, I, had to, I had to lay it all down. And I, in order for me to get to heaven and have a relationship with God forever, I need to find that relationship here. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so it, the, the fear of God is birthed. And uh, so we started, yeah, just, just wanting to find people that were seeing the same thing. And we finally um, just started going to the beach and reading the Bible. <laughs> and finding, you found the Peters and the Joes and all the California we, crowd. We finally did, yes, finally realized like, wow, there's been a church that's been uh, birthed out of this. And uh, we found the Peters in Fresno and they completely laid down their lives for us and you know, drove down to, to LA and you know, uh, with in those days there was you know more controversy I guess if you will around the church than there is right now and but I kept going back to but this is the only thing that has truly changed my life and it's right there in the Bible and and seeing scriptures like you know narrow is the road mm -hmm. and only a few are going to find it mm -hmm. and so I would like okay it's not going to be you know the masses like I thought and so there was a lot of just working it out going back to the Bible and, and then seeing our, uh, I, don't mean to, I, don't, I don't mean to monopolize here, but, um, you know, experiencing for the first time, oh, can you can mute me, Ms. Uh, I didn't bring my iPad. Tech team. Yeah, no, <laughs> Bibi, Bibi normally can control the, the sound up there, and he could, he, he threatened to mute me if I. <laughs> gotcha, hey, guys, so. can you? <laughs> She's a little loud. <laughs> But for the first time of putting all this into practice and getting prayers answered, um, the weight finally came off, um, you know, much lower than I had been in high school without relying on the extreme exercise. Our marriage was uh, becoming so much just more peaceful. I didn't realize, you know, that it was definitely upside down. My desires are changing, you know. I, you know, I hadn't even desired to be a mother. All of a sudden there's this new, you know, desire in me. I mean, our whole paradigm shifted. The joy. Um. I think the, and also the freedom of, you know, I mean, we had such a clutch on wanting so much out of the world, you know. I think we were so driven to get this thing that we had built up in our minds that was everything. Mm -hmm. You know, this career status and this thing that we wanted. So it was just everything. And, and so you're out there, you're around everybody that's so driven that people are just driving a million miles an hour just to get what they get where they're going and what they're after. So you get in that and it's fast and it's, everyone's at, after it. And so no one's really thinking about anything else but their own passion, you know? So when that all kind of, when our lives were starting to change and scriptures were coming, you know, coming to light and it was getting real, it was like all that stuff kind of started to peel away. It was kind of uninteresting. Not uninteresting because I feel like we, there was still, I feel like we had these gifts, but, but just that pursuit and that drive was kind of starting to feel like this is a lot of work for, you know, it's just empty. And should know. we, should we, you should know, we what does God really want? Yeah, I don't think we ever. Even though in, before in, in false religion, 
you can just about do anything. I mean, there's a few things left that maybe they would say you can't do. I mean, uh, that would be off the list. But I mean, there's, you know, what does God really have for my life? What is my purpose? What, am, what do I need to be doing? And with these gifts and that type thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I remember y'all uh, going through that process and, and uh, peeling off, peeling, like you say, everybody in that fast lane going that, you know, fast is very difficult, difficult to get off that conveyor belt. And uh, I'd honestly amazing that you all did, that God spared you, saved you, and got you into a connection with Him versus a connection with the world. Because it gets tighter and tighter. So we praise God for them, do we not? Uh, we praise God. But God has a way of, of you know, getting us, getting us there. And, uh, and so you, you had the controller, some of the anorexic tendency, BB lost weight. Yeah. And, um, and then God blessed y'all with two gorgeous children. Oh my word, <laughs> Thad and Isabella. So precious. So adorable. Mm, mm, mm. So, but, uh, okay, well, what would you tell, you know, um, people on, in terms of just helping them if they, if they were, you know, on that path that y'all were pursuing or the path of, um, and, and, and we talk about body focus here a little bit to drag that into this conversation, but the image, you talk about the image, you know, all that, for people that are, I have their own selfish ambition. Like James says, anyone that has selfish ambition, I can tell you that it's, it's, a, it's, it's earthly. It's not of God. And, um, and we're not, honestly, I was not taught for that. I, I, I know, <laughs> at first, like I had to read it several times when I find, you know, like really was digesting. I went, whoa, man, that cuts like a knife. And uh, so, um, what would you tell people to help them get off that path of self-focus? Of self, of self Selfish focus. ambition, self-focus. Did you want to? Well, I mean, I think the big thing is just obviously staying in the Word, and then also it's, it is, it's changing the focus. I know that seems so, well, duh, you know, but I, I felt like the more I would focus up in what God wanted, you know, and off myself, obviously, you know, what genius of God is just then the weight obviously comes off like you've taught and that it's, it, it is, it's like even if I, you know, if there's ever a tendency of starting to, you know, get back looking on myself again, it's like I'm trying to control that again. It's, it is, it's, it's just putting to death again. It's that putting to death, putting that to death, choosing the spirit and not the selfish ambition, you know, and the desires that it's just that daily getting up, God, this is your day, you know, looking to him for everything and just not even thinking about the food like you've taught, you know, just like, and just letting, waiting for that, that growl and just going hour by hour, you know? I think it's just in training, training your mind to do that, and, and um, then I feel like it's amazing, and the God, obviously the weight falls off, you know? And, I think it was interesting you were telling me earlier when I talked this afternoon about the voices. Um, you know, y'all were out in California on the beach, so you didn't have all these naysayers or all these people saying you couldn't do this, or it yeah. was almost nice to, uh, to have you know, um, sweet to be just, yeah, to get we grounded. Were, we're in a city with lots of people, but not a lot of connections yet, you know, friends or anything. It was time to really, you know, just dig into the word and, and not have a lot of, you know, people trying to say, oh, you can't do that or don't read that. That doesn't really mean this or it really means this or, mm -hmm. and you, know, you start listening to all that, all those voices and you get confused and you're like, ah, oh, you know, you, you give up or, so it was a very sweet time that, that you know, because you look back and you think, why did, why did we get shipped all the way out there? Why did God put us in California, you know? We're from the, we're, we're from the Midwest, I mean. Um, but now you can look back and see the progression of it. And just, that's, it was, it you was your desert. Uh -huh. It was your desert and a, a long time with God. And it does take that grounding. I, I look back at this message and the amount of spiritual warfare around it that rips people out of here. I, 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 that's one reason why I knew to keep going because of the warfare. 
but sometimes I you know, think, how does anybody make it through? But like you said, you kept hanging on. You kept like going back to that word and hanging on. I know there's people out there you know, uh, on Facebook and all the different people calling in all the time that are, uh, and Candace, you know better a lot of the questions on Facebook, but they're, they're asking, you know, when I'm struggling or how do you make it through? But there is a purpose behind the struggle, but the purpose is not for you to, over, to, to get caught up in it. The purpose is for you to overcome it, you know, to rise above it. And, and uh, there's no temptation that has come to you that is not, that it's not common to man. And so therefore, you know, uh, you know we, we've been given everything that we need. So what is it holding us back? And you hit on something earlier. You go, I, I knew it was wrong, but I was still doing it. And so I ordered up, you know, truth, so to speak, you know, truth, way down advance or whatever form it comes in, God's giving you this truth and, and staying in that truth but then you, you kept going and reaching for more, and then you reached out for people that were in it, and a foot cannot say to a hand. And that's one thing I did learn, is the, uh, somebody truly in the, in the message, they really understand, they're grounded on the will of God. You cannot say to a hand, I have no need of you. I cannot say to a foot, I have no need of you. You eventually, God will humble you to the point where you, you, you know, I, I, my life's, a mess, I know it down deep, and I need, I need more. So that's what y'all did. Y'all, you didn't realize it. You didn't like go check it off, one, two, three, four, five, find people. It's like you instinctively, God drives you to seeing that there's more out there. There's more out there. I've got to find these people that are all lit on fire all the time and, and, and very, very excited. And I know, like you say, there was so much warfare in the beginning of, of, of this when it first started, just because you'd have people coming and going, you didn't know who was in or who wasn't, and, and, uh, and so it was only God could have, could have taken care you know, of you to, to let you hang on. But there's a lot of people that left and have come back. Mm -hmm. That happens every day here. God's driving them back home. Um, it says in James, who is wise and understanding among you? And uh, this is verse, verse 13, chapter 5. Let, let, let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, they put those two together. So in other words, kind of a coveting. You're looking out at the Joneses and you know, you're trying to rise to the top or whatever. You, you harbor that, that selfish ambition in your hearts. Do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, is pure, okay? Pure meaning you don't have other loves. So the wisdom that comes from heaven is pure. You don't have other idols. You've laid that down. You don't have other desires. If it's food, it's food. If it's alcohol, it's alcohol. If it's greed for money, it's that. If it's greed for self in any form, you've laid it down, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, which would be love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, impartial and sincere, sincerely in love with God, sincerely loving his, his, his fellow man. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. So that's cool. So selfish ambition. And we all were told to have it, basically. I mean, honestly, generations of churchgoers that were uh, 
That, that's, that's really what you need to be doing. And I'm not saying you don't go out there and, and find the gift that God's given you, develop it to its fullest, using the wisdom of, of, of leaders and saints and parents, finding you know, your occupations. Because I mean, you're gonna, be, you're gonna be working with your hands, working to, to get something done, and uh, all of that, but putting all that together, it's, it's done in a way that's so guided by God so that you don't become a workaholic or you don't become a, you know, um, if, if he lifts you up, it's God that lifts a man up. And that's, I don't think we understood that either. Only God can lift someone up. So when you're not lifted up yet, it's God, you know, he can lift you up, he can sit you down, but it's God. And we think we do it. And so we're fed that and, and then you get nowhere and finally fall on your face and you go, I'm not getting anywhere with, with any of it. But it's a connection with God. He's not looking for just an obedience. He's looking for a relationship. He's not looking for uh, robots. He is definitely, that's what Pentecost is all about. God coming down on Mount Sinai and then touching man, man coming up to God and, and God, the finger of God writing in stone, you know, so that nobody can switch up the words, the very words that connect us to him. Thou shalt have no other gods, no other interests, no other loves. You know, don't bow down to the moon, the stars, don't bow to anything in this earth, nothing up there in the sky, nothing down, nothing. Bow down to nothing. I'm the Lord your God. I'm a jealous God. My name is Jealous. And he's jealous for us and he loves us and he adores us. It's a, it's a whole message of love that's an unbelievable relationship that you can't talk about <laughs> to a lot of the world, you know what I'm saying? And uh, praise God for a TV show you can. <laughs> but it is, it's, uh, it's, you, you want to you wanna scream it out, but only so many people want to hear it. So just waiting for God to send that person that's wanting to hear it. And, but but it, the world, the world can't see it. They don't have the spirit to see it. It takes God's spirit. How do you get God's spirit? We talked about that last week. You obey. God gives his spirit to those who obey. You know, that's what we found in Acts 5.32. You, you know, God, you, you obey, and then God gives you this spirit. On the day of Pentecost, the spirit comes down. It says to righteous men, righteous men. And then... They were, the other men were wanting it. They said, what do we need to do to be baptized? And 3,000 people, uh, I mean, to, be, to get this spirit, and they said, be baptized, you know, every one of you for the remission of your, of your sins. I mean, get rid of it. Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Get away from there. Get away from there. Save yourselves and, and get out. And so they did. The early Christians did. They got out. They isolated themselves to a certain extent. They were working in the world, but they met together daily like we do. They talk about God all the time. They were, you know, experiencing the answered prayers. They shared their possessions and their, their monies, and they took care of each other, and they were concerned for one another. And so we know that we have found it by the fruit that, that, uh, that, that's going on here. And... So anyway, all that to say is, here's, here's an example of, of had you not found fellowship, you know, where do you think you would be? It's hard to say, isn't it? It's not for me. <laughs> Easy to say. I, would, I, would, I wasn't gonna make it. I don't think I would've even made it. No. I mean, God sent this fellowship at the right time, even for, you know, me, because it was so mixed. But it was just an unbelievable, you know, to be able to find other people doing it. Oh, yeah. Just to, to talk about, you know, every day, what, what is God showing you and how can I pray for you? And it's real. Yeah. It's real. 
And uh, I have the small little group of women that we text each other each morning, and it starts really early. Ann sent an early riser, <laughs> 4.45, she'll send you know, some text. But it's awesome then to see how it all, uh, what, you know, what's, what God's showing everybody. And just that, that small thing is, I mean, a drop in the bucket example of just what we have of the like-mindedness here. One, one thing you said, if I may, just with selfish ambition, that um, that was so tricky for me to identify, and even with the, um, with the weight loss of once understanding the principles of what God wants and the freedom of that, of eat when you're hungry, stop when you're full, and go to God for, for everything else, you know, if you're tempted, that, that simple principle of, but it was tricky, and this is some of these women that we've been texting, um, now to always like, you know, with getting on the scale, to that cannot be the motivator, you know, and just checking my heart of, it's got to all, like, get rid of the selfish ambition to lose weight, you know, just that it's all about God and find this relationship with God and not just seeing the number go down. And um, that, that is what got me to the other side of, of the, the trickiness of selfish ambition. I don't, I'm not, I don't know if I'm saying it very well, but just, you know, that fear came in and then just, like, abandon ship. Mm -hmm. I want God. Mm -hmm. And I don't mm -hmm. care what that number says. The, then the irony is the number does come down. Yeah. It, and to lower than you think, but that it's, it's truly all about God. I totally agree. And well said because it's, you know, uh, the, that, the scales there to see if you're telling yourself the truth, and mainly, but it's not about a number. It's definitely about a relationship with God. Candace, you can jump in there. Well, one of the things I'm just being very moved by is when I look at your life or their life, it, it does take a leap of faith. You know, um, on Facebook, you see people, you sometimes have one foot in, one foot out. You know, they're afraid to go to have that change of life or to totally change their life or just to make God number one. What's my life going to look like? What's my husband going to think? What's my wife going to think? What are my children going to think? What is my church going to think? What is my you know, what is my life going to look like? What's my career going to be? What's my, you know, and um, I know just watching you guys, I mean, if you, I, we had an opportunity to go hear some music or something recently, and, and some of B.B. and Miley's friends were there, and uh, I was looking at B.B. and Miley and looking at how rich their life was <laughs> and how wonderful their life was in comparison to their peers who, you know, had stayed on that path. Oh, and um, I was there that night. Yes, we were all there. And it was like when I was, I was, you know, you're seeing this person sing on stage and then you're looking at B.B. and Miley and you have this picture of them it's like singing for God and writing songs for God and just realizing that when you do put God first and you go all in and you don't worry about, you can't worry about how it's all going to turn out. You, that is, it has to be that leap of faith. And then to see... Um, you know, how God totally gives back. And it, you could say that for, obviously, for your life, too. I mean, you didn't know what was going to happen when you started way down. And st it started the church and, you know, everybody coming after, you know, all those different things coming after you. Oh, but I you just went assumed it was all over. <laughs> I mean, honestly, yeah. all over. That was an unbelievable onslaught. Yeah. It was, I oh. mean, that was... It, yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yes. There's, enough, there's a few other words for that. Yes, there's... <laughs> Many words come yeah. to my mind. But, and, but, I mean, look at, your life is so blessed. And so I guess my encouragement for, we were just, uh, you know, sometimes you get to know participants over the years that call in to Way Down or on Facebook. You know them for years as they, as they ebb and flow. But you're just praying for them to go full in, like take the leap. You know, look how great your guys' lives are. You're not going to lose anything, you know, and, um, and I know if people are out there going, well, there is no one in my area, there is no fellowship, but that is what that Facebook page is there for. It is for you to be, you know, you set it up so that we could all be connected to each other oh, if yeah. there's not a local class or, you know, when they're calling way down and the regional reps, like, like, you know, like we said earlier that Jane is meeting with Bride in Ireland, you know, she's going over there for work, so she calls the office and goes, who's in Ireland or who's in the UK that I could call? And so, you know, we call Bride and say, can we give your phone number out? And then they get together for coffee and then there were two or more gathered, you know, I am there always. And it is worth this spiritual warfare to push through it and to push through the, 
when you face yourself, you know, the selfish ambition you find in yourself, it, it's just so worth going through it all. Um, and there's a purpose behind it. Yeah. I mean, even some of the loneliness, but I mean, when you have this many people who all their vacation centered around going to, uh, to another saint's house in another area, you, sometimes you have more fellowship when you're not right there in Nashville. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean... Uh, and they can always come visit. I mean, we love right. when people come. And we'd love to... I remember the first time we came down, we felt very... Uh, spiritual warfare, we felt very weary. I remember when we got off the plane and landed in Nashville and the whole church just kind of gathered around us and prayed over us. And it, it really is a cup of cold water when you come down. It is like, you know, it isn't a desert oasis no matter what weekend you come. I mean, it really, so we love for, we love obviously any weekend people want to come. So there's a lot of fellowship we can provide for people, so. Well, I am just grateful to be free. I mean, to, for people to go, how do you get free? How do you get free? And to see y'all free, to see y'all, because I watched you go through it. I mean, you know, walking through, like you say, what's my career going to be? What am I going to do? You know, what's God going to do? I love what you just said, Candace, because it's like, you know, we're, we're, I didn't know where I was going to end up. You didn't know where you were going to end up. You didn't, you know, we all still don't really know the end of the story. And however, we know the end of the story. I mean, we had the story, the story has ended enough to where the rest of it doesn't matter. I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, you have that relationship with God every day, day in, day out. You're gonna have trouble in this world. You're gonna, um, you're gonna have growth. You're gonna have, diff you know, there's gonna be things to grow you but there's a difference between that kind of a struggle versus, you know, one God's allowing versus one from your own selfish desires or where in the back of your mind you're kind of like insecure with God and your, your, your relationship with God, you know God's not happy or something's not right. All of that, it's just, it's just not worth it not having peace with God. It's just not worth it. So I am... That. Amen. Well, any final words here that y'all want to like say? <laughs> I mean, you got a chance to talk some other uh, people into it. Well, I'm please. just. I mean, I, I'm. I'm just grateful. I'm. I'm. You know, our lives are so full and so joyful, and we're so grateful to you. And I mean, thankful I mean, to God. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Thankful to God and. Um, I don't know, we just have such a full life and it's, it's so peaceful now to know that, you know, whatever happens, however, what, whatever plan God has for us, just, just to know that, you know, it's just a, that it's a, it's just a free, it's freeing, it's just amazing just how that, everything just peels away, it's just awesome, just the uh, anxiety, the selfish ambition, the desires for things that, you know, outside of God's boundaries, it's just kind of just, it melts away. So, I mean, obviously they're tests, but it's just amazing just to now have the tools you know, the tools to, to handle it and to not have that, um, the anxiety and the buildup anymore, you know, and to just be free to go wherever God wants us to go. And then pass down that legacy to the Barkas, the Barkas tribe that's come along, that they won't have what we had before as we establish, you know, just laying down this sin and then teaching them not to pick these things up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they won't have to go through you know, what we have. As, we, as long as we continue these festivals, the festivals are all about remembering what God has done, remembering, like at Passover, we spent so much time remembering Egypt with our children, showing them what it was. You know, we used to be enslaved, and now we're free. This room is so just thin compared to what it was. We couldn't have gotten everybody in here. We really couldn't have. That's true. I know it sounds funny, but it's, it's true. We couldn't have gotten everybody in here and we couldn't have, you know, we wouldn't have gotten along. The children wouldn't be still enough to listen. And the children are totally touched by God to, to, to be, to be um, you know, in this day and age, to be focused and interested in God. So all of that, knowing that you have a legacy of children that are going to obey and and then their children will obey, and then they're showing that full respect up, you know, all these things that God's teaching us. 
It's a whole new world out there. Yes. And so, so how do we go to the beach and not get self-focused? We are, since I, when, when, when we've ever gone, it's definitely been vacations of saints. And, um, you know, we'll go through the book of Jeremiah. We'll go through, I mean, it's always, it's, it's you know, it is definitely all of our vacations, all of that's God focused and you're helping one another out. You're not competing. Um, you're, you're, you're so compassionate for anyone hurting and any needs that everybody's needs are being met. And so it's, it's beautiful. You were the first person that taught me, taught our family what, that it, vacation, you know, it didn't mean a vacation away from, from loving and obeying God. You kept doing that. In fact, you had more time to do that. And anyway, I could go on all day, the things you taught us, but you're the first one that said like, you take care of your body, you don't, you don't burn it. And you don't, you know, you don't. And I remember it was like all of us putting on sunblock, you know, it was like for the first time it was like, oh, you know, so I'm taking care of my body and you're taking care of your children, making sure. And, and um, you're like, I just remember little things like, oh, this is the hottest part of the day. This is when it's the hardest on the children. Let's come in and do a Devo during this time. And it was just so logical, yet I had never thought of it before. And um, it, it was a total paradigm focus. Uh, you said if there was somebody in need, you were always inside counseling, or it wasn't always about, and anyway, there, I could go on, and we could do a whole show on what you've taught us for vacations. And we always start in the mornings with Devos, and people would stay in all the different houses, and everybody would end up in your living room in the morning, like nine o'clock in the morning, people would kind of like trickle in and you know, sit on the floor and everything. And you would open the Bible and you would let the children share and do scriptures. And then, like you said, you would look outside and see what God was saying. And if it was storming, you, you would always flip that and say, oh, it's God's telling us to come inside. Or, you know, um, you're always like braiding someone's hair, or you're fixing their hair for them or you were putting a little bow on them or, you know, if they, if they felt down or, you know, just, Anyway, it, so it was just very beautiful. And then, um, you know, sometimes in the evening you would put the lights down lower and you'd have us, we'd all get flashlights and we'd read the word by the flashlight and then all the kids would go out with the flashlight and look for crabs. And it was, but it was all about God's creatures. And, um, you know, I know we have a time limit, so I can't tell everything, but you've taught us so much about our time and how our time has been. And I, I feel like you've also been one that's talked to us about how time is short, you know, and that, you know, you, today is the day that we have to obey God, no matter where you are. And so it, anyway, so I'm very, our family is very grateful for that. So the days of the vacations where you just kind of go and let it all loose and eat whatever. and yeah, your blanket. <laughs> yeah, the reflect, the Crisco. No, but the, uh, yeah, all the, he said the reflector blanket, but all those days where you just went and let loose on vacation, that was your time just to let loose and those, those uh, I don't even remember, mm. there's just, that's not even in the scope, you know, so. And B.B., you tell me before, beforehand about how when you were a child, you wouldn't even ever go to the pool. You wouldn't go. It was a huge struggle, yeah. I mean, I didn't want, I mean, I would find so many other things to do to, to avoid it. it was Not so to go to the pool. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, self-focused yeah. by that time. And I understand that. So I, I, how, how beautiful it is to get children that are not around that. They don't see it and have a childlike, mm -hmm. have a childlike heart. And that's really what we've all become is more childlike. We've really, truly become more like kids. And so it's beautiful. Well, um, I want to thank you all for obeying God. Thank you for seeking God. Thank you for finding God. And then laying your lives down. And, you know, I know many more beautiful, beautiful years are ahead for your family because it doesn't do anything but get better. And so let's thank them for joining us tonight. And praise God for that. And, um, I just uh, want to remind all those listening out there of sometimes you look at this and you think, uh, oh, you know, I can never look like that or I can never do what they're saying or I can. Yes, you can. If you could even hear what we're saying, you know that God's calling you, that he, he opens up that door for you and that he 
adores you. Everything about your life, go back and write it down. Everything that's happened to you means that he adores you. And with that love that you have uh, gotten from God and from Jesus Christ, all that, with all of that together, and you know, joining us for Pentecost to learn even more about that love. But it's, it's unbelievable what God has given you to make sure that you can let those other loves alone and walk away from any desires tonight, never return again. That is possible for you. And then turn that heart, don't let it go, turn that heart straight up to the heavens, straight up to God, cling on to Him, and the next thing you know, you'll be happier than you've ever been before. If you do all this, through the name of Jesus Christ, you too can overcome. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time. Is the free that we seen for eternity? Without God and His Son Jesus, everything is peaceful and lightness. Happy always doing His will. Happy always doing His will. Over Just dance, kiss the free, happy sing for eternity. Without God and His Son Jesus, everything is peaceful and lightness. Happy always doing His will, happy always doing His will. Over. Oh,